In the previous lecture, we were introduced to the string type and we have seen how it works, what is it used for and we have also seen how to initialize strings. Now, in this lecture and for the coming few lectures, we will be discussing operations on strings. So, we will see what are the different operations we can perform on strings and since there are quite a few of them, we will be dividing this topic into several parts. So, in this first part, we will be talking about three important string operations and they are reading and writing strings, reading an unknown number of strings and using get line to read an entire line. So, in the previous lecture when we took examples of strings, we did not actually read any string from the user input. We were actually just defining and assigning literal values to the strings and we were just printing them out. So, what if we want to take input from the user? So, obviously that is going to be a very important use case. So, we are going to deal with how we are going to read and write strings from the user. So, based on that we will discuss these three topics. So, let's discuss the first one. So, reading and writing strings. So, we will take example programs to understand this. So, the first way is here. We just declare a string called readme which is the name of the string. It is an empty string because there is nothing assigned to it yet and then here we say c in readme. That means using the console input, we are getting some value from the user that will be stored inside this string called readme. So, we read a string into the readme and it is separated by white space. So, this is a very important thing here. So, you are not going to be able to store any string with spaces in this method. So, whenever a white space is encountered while entering this string, then everything after that white space would be discarded. Only whatever you enter before the white space would be stored inside the string called readme. Okay? So, here we are just printing out readme and then we are putting a new line over here. So, let us run this program and see how it actually works. So, here I am on Visual Studio Code and I have written the complete program for the small code snippet that we saw in the slide. Here you can see these are the three important lines. Okay, let us run this program to see how it works. The name of the file is ss2.cpp. So, we type g++ ss2.cpp, press enter. The program is compiled successfully. Let us run the output file. Okay, now as I run the output file, you can see the cursor is here and it is actually waiting for the user input. It is waiting for me to enter something. So, let me just enter hello and if I press enter, you can see that same hello is printed. So, what happened is it read the hello that I entered. It stored it into this string called readme and that same string was printed out. Okay. Now, let me run the program again once more and now let me enter two words. Let me say hello Nesso. Okay. And I press enter now and you can see that even now only hello is printed. So, as I told you, since we have a white space here, everything after the white space would be discarded. Only whatever is there before the white space would be considered and stored in the string called readme. Okay, so we can try even entering longer sentences. So, here I say hello from Nesso Academy and if I press enter, you can see still then only hello is going to be printed. Okay, so we see that this is a small limitation of this method. So, let's go to the next method now. Alright, so here we saw that we are able to print only the first word that we are entering and everything after white space would be discarded. So, let's say that I want to print both the words. Now, what will I do? So, coming to that, we have the next method. So, here what I am doing is I am saying string readme1 and readme2. So, basically we have two strings now and initially they are both empty strings. They are not initialized to anything and then here we say c in readme1 and readme2. So, here it means read the first input to read me 1 and the second input to read me 2 separated by white space. So, whatever you enter, the first word will be stored in read me 1 and once you give a white space, the next word that you enter would be stored in read me 2. Okay? And then here we are printing it out read me 1 and I am giving a space here so that it is clear when the output is generated and then I am printing read me 2. So, write both read me 1 and read me 2 separated by white space. Right? Now, let's run this program and see how it works. So, here on Visual Studio Code, I have written the complete program for that code snippet. So, these were the three lines that we had. Now, let's run this program. Okay. So, as I run the output file, again we see the cursor waiting here for our input. Now, let me enter hello Nesso and if I press enter, you see hello Nesso is printed. So, basically this hello was stored inside readme1 and then when I gave a space, then the next word that I entered was stored in readme2. 
so far it works so good. Now what if I want to enter a longer sentence? So let's say that I want to enter Hello from Nassau Academy and if I press enter, you see even here it is going to print only the first two words. Why? Because we just have two string variables and they are both separated by the first white space that it encounters and after that whatever it encounters after this second white space everything would be discarded again. So again we see that using this method you can print a few of the words but it is not a very good or efficient way when you want to print longer sentences. So that brings us to the third method and let's see what that is. So the third method is reading an unknown number of strings. In the first method we saw that we could read just one string. In the second method we could read two strings. Now there could be a time when we want to enter or read unknown number of strings. Like for example we are writing a sentence and then we don't know how many strings are going to be there. It could be n number of strings. So in that case we'll use this method where you can see here again we are declaring a string called readme and then here we are making use of a while loop and inside the while loop the condition is C in readme. That means as long as the user is entering something then this while condition would run and till when would it run? Until the end of file is encountered. End of file is something that specifies the ending of the file and that can be represented by control Z on your keyboard if you are on a Windows system and control D if you are on a Linux based system. So we will see that and then here we see C out readme. So this C out also is within the while loop. So as long as the user enters something it would be read into this readme and then that would be printed. So the next time the user enters something again, the old readme would be overwritten with that new value and that new value would be printed again and it will go on for each iteration. So it write each string separated by a new line. So we have an end line given here which is going to separate the output with a new line each time it is getting a new value. So let us now run this program and see how it works. Okay, so here on Visual Studio Code again I've written the complete program and here as you can see these are the three lines that we had. Now let us run this program. Alright, so as I run it you can see the cursor again waiting for my input and then now let us enter a long sentence. Now as you can see I type hello from Nassau Academy and there are one, two, three white spaces and now I'm going to hit enter and you can see hello from Nassau Academy. All the four words are printed separated by a new line and you can see the program is not terminated. You can see the cursor again waiting for input from us. So as I said it would only terminate when it encounters the end of file. So let's say again I am trying to enter something. Okay so I enter this sentence and I press enter and you see for every white space it encountered it printed that particular word which was stored in the string. So hello there have a nice day, hello there have a nice day and then you can see the cursor still waiting for the next input. So if you want to end it as I said you can press Control Z on the keyboard and hit enter and that is counted as the end of file and then we break from that loop and the program terminates. Alright, so that was about reading the input using this while loop and then printing the output separated by a new line. Now coming to the last method here, we are going to make use of a function called getLine to read an entire line. And how does this work? Let's see. Here as you can see we are declaring another string called readme and then here we are again making use of a while loop and inside the while loop it says getLine and within parenthesis C in comma readme. So what it basically means is that it is going to again take the user input and going to store it to readme and with the help of this getLine function it is going to take the input one line at a time and this also would go on until the end of file is encountered. So EOF means end of the file and this again while loop would be running till end of file is encountered and then this readme would be printed and it is again separated by a new line. So let us see how this program works. Okay so on Visual Studio Code here we are again and these are the lines that we just saw in the slide. Let me run this program now. So you see again as we run the program the cursor is waiting for the input. Now let's enter the input. So here I entered this sentence can I get some coffee please and then you can see that each word is separated by a white space and then I hit enter. You can see that here that entire line is printed. Okay and each word is not separated by a new line like we saw in the previous example. Here we see this getLine function is reading one line at a time. 
So we can see this is a nice function that you can make use of to read entire lines and print them as they are. So you can see the program is not terminated yet. It is again waiting for the next input. So you can also enter one word like this. And if you want, you can enter longer sentences. Okay, and as I press enter, you can see that with great power comes great responsibility. That same sentence is printed again. All right, now if you want to break from this loop again, we can give the end of file by hitting Control Z and then pressing enter. And you can see that this is counted as end of file and then the while loop is broken and the program terminates. All right, so that is how you make use of the get line function to read the input one line at a time and it would go on until the end of file is encountered. All right, so basically that was about the operations that we had to discuss in this particular part where we basically dealt with reading and writing strings. So this is very important when we start working with strings. So we will continue with the other operations in the next video. So I hope this was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.